If you're new to the gym, or you just want to build strength faster, you've been blessed by the algorithm. Because the advice I'll be sharing throughout this video comes from over 10 years in the health and fitness industry. But why should you trust me? Because I've ran an Australian certified personal training and coaching business for over 7 years. And I've also won numerous gold medals on stage in natural bodybuilding. So in other words, you can say I'm an expert in the field. So let's answer some of the most common questions beginners have when it comes to building strength fast. How can I avoid injury when lifting heavy weights for the first time? There are both practical strategies and logical strategies. So let's start with the logical ones. Are you consistently sleeping between 7 and 9 hours per night? Are you consistently having 2 to 3 full rest days in between training that same muscle group? For beginners, the recommendation is actually 3 full rest days before re-attempting to train that muscle group again. Thirdly, are you taking the appropriate steps before increasing weight? For example, before increasing weight, you must master posture, then range of motion, then stability and control. Those are all the steps that come before increasing weight. Let's say that you want to introduce a new exercise into your workout program. Start extremely light or with no weight at all. Then go down the list. Posture. How do I set up? How do I perform this exercise to get the most out of the exercise? How do I perform the full range of motion? Where do I stop? Where do I start? Am I going through the full flexion and extension? Thirdly, am I maximizing time under tension? Am I in control of the weight or is the weight in control of me? If you are able to master all three of those steps, then you can increase load. So to say, how do I avoid getting injured when lifting heavy weights? Technically in your mind, that weight should not be heavy if you have taken the appropriate steps to get to that weight. I hope that makes sense. Secondly, we have the strategy called progressive overload. The literal key to whether or not you're gonna continue seeing success in both your strength and muscle gains from week to week. You must be progressing in some way, shape or form when it comes to your training, whether that be on your sets, your reps, your total volume, your time and attention, your tempo, your technique, your setups, your dismount, whatever the case may be, from week to week you must be progressing. Also, I forgot to mention the obvious one, which is weight. So, before increasing weight, and before getting to those heavier weights, there are a handful of things, some of which I've just mentioned, that you can and must be progressing in before getting to those heavy weights to avoid the potential of injury. Thirdly, it's gonna be a controversial one, but don't have a spotter. Don't have a spotter. Have a spotter for there as an emergency situation, but in my opinion, don't have a spotter, period. Because that's gonna teach you to not require a spotter. Let me give you an analogy. Let's say one week you came in and you required a spotter, and that spotter, all he did was put his fingers on the bar or on the dumbbells. The next time you re-attempt that weight again, in the back of your mind, you're gonna say, well, the last time I did this, I required a spotter. So mid-set, you're already gonna doubt yourself, or before you've even lifted the weight, you're already doubting yourself. So therefore, that weight is technically too heavy for you. So don't lift weight, don't ego lift, is what I'm trying to get to. Don't lift weight that you can't lift without a spotter. And of course, just make sure that you are incorporating those strategies that are mentioned in the first strategy. When it comes to your sleep, when it comes to your rest, when it comes to your warming up. What is the safest rep range for increasing strength? Again, I have another very controversial answer here, but before I give you that, I'll give you the logical and scientific answer first. The safest and most effective rep range for specifically increasing strength is four and six repetitions per set. The reason this rep range is the most effective is because you're gonna be able to lift really heavy weights while still maintaining good form 
and while also reducing the risk of injury, especially the risk of injury that's associated with one RM, so one rep maxes. It becomes controversial because I would never in a million years recommend any beginner to drop below 10 repetitions. In fact, beginners should not be performing below 15 repetitions. Their rep ranges should stick between 15 and 30 repetitions. Only and only up until you hit a novice training age, then you can drop that between 10 and 20 repetitions. Past novice, you can start touching base on hypertrophy. So eight to 12, eight to 20 repetitions. The reason that's the case is as a beginner, regardless of what you're doing, as long as you are incorporating progressive overload, then you are going to be gaining strength and muscle regardless. In the beginning, you must just focus on the core principles, the principles that are taught you from earlier. Posture, range of motion, stability and control. That should be your focus in the beginning. So regardless of your training age, regardless of how many years you've been in the gym, training consistently, only ever touch base on strength training rep ranges, even on the safe end of four to six, if you are competing or have plans on competing in a strength competition, so a powerlifting competition. Otherwise, never drop below seven repetitions, that is hypertrophy. So hypertrophy, seven to 20 repetitions. And I would only recommend a hypertrophy for intermediates and above. If you really wanted to know the scientific answer, the long story short is between four and six repetitions. How often should I change my strength training routine to prevent plateaus? Honestly, as long as you are adequately incorporating progressive overload from week to week, then you can literally have the same exact workout routine with the same exact exercise selection for up to 12 weeks. After which, then I would recommend that you make some changes in your program, some changes in your exercise selection in order to continue seeing progression and avoid plateaus. Some changes. You don't have to change the entire workout program. Altering your exercises too frequently is not necessary at all because you can literally just increase or decrease repetitions to maintain difficulty, increase time under tension, increase volume, perfect technique, posture, tempo, among other strategies. Honestly, 99 times out of 100, progressive overload is enough in order to continually challenge your muscles and achieve strength gains. What's the role of nutrition in building strength and how should I adjust my diet to continue seeing progress? That's quite the in-depth question there, son. First and foremost, nutrition is absolutely critical when it comes to building strength, when it comes to building muscle. It's absolutely non-negotiable. It is the literal determinant in whether you gain or you don't gain anything. The first step that you should take is calculating your TDEE, -E, your total daily energy expenditure. You can do this for free online. There are many calculators. Simply input your height, your age, your weight, and your activity level, and then you will find a figure. That figure is your total calories, either for your maintenance in order to maintain your weight, in order for a deficit, in order to lose weight, or in our case, we want to increase strength and increase muscle. Thus, we need to find the number that is called a caloric surplus. That number is above our maintenance and that allows us to increase strength and increase muscle. So that's step number one. Step number two is readjusting and recalibrating this number once per month. So what do I mean by this? Once per month, usually just every 30 days, re-input your data because your weight's gonna change. Your activity level is most likely going to change. So re-input your data into that same calculator and it's gonna spit out a slightly adjusted figure. Now utilize that new figure, whether it's higher or lower. Just utilize that new figure, which is just your calories, that it spits out to you every single month and that's how you continue seeing progress and avoid plateaus because even 30 calories makes a huge 
difference. Step three, as a beginner, if you want to get complex, 25% of those calories from that TDEE calculator should be comprised of protein. 50 to 55% should be comprised of carbohydrates, ideally complex, and thirdly, the remainder should be in fats. That is how you should structure your calories, your macronutrients, and track your progress in both the short and long term. How important is sleep for strength training recovery? I think the best way I can answer this question is giving you this simple, real analogy. In the gym, we simply tear our muscle fibers. It's in the process of recovery when we are away from the weights, when we are sleeping, when we are just doing our day-to-day -day gig, that we are recovering. That's when our muscles repair, come back bigger and stronger than before. As beginners, I briefly mentioned that earlier on in this video, take three full rest days away from the gym before touching base on that same muscle group again. If you are incorporating strength specific rep ranges, so your goal is to compete in a strength competition, a powerlifting competition, believe it or not, you actually require even longer rest times compared to someone who's just sticking between 10 and 30 repetitions. This is simply because as a strength trainer, you are taxing your central nervous system and your muscle skeletal system significantly more compared to someone who isn't focusing on those lower rep ranges, those strength specific rep ranges, thus requiring higher and longer rest times, thus requiring more full rest days between the last time you trained that muscle group. Of course, the obvious one as well is making sure that you consistently incorporate between seven and nine hours of sleep per night. Making up for sleep on the weekend is not a thing, so don't try to do that. Don't try to fall in the myth of making up for sleep on the weekend. Understand as well that if you aim to continue seeing progression from week to week in your strength and muscle, poor sleep is gonna hinder every aspect of strength training and every aspect of muscle building. Ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up today's video. If you learned something, please consider dropping me a like, subscribing to the channel, commenting below, and if you want to debate me, down in the comment section, feel free to. I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.